Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm a say your blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel, may we, and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for sake fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elaine, you king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May he be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Now, as you know, we are a week behind. So I'm going to do um, Yeah, let's We are going to do uh, how do you pronounce that? Mish Patim? I guess is how you pronounce that. Anyways, it's going to be Exodus 21, 1 through 24, 18. 2 Kings 11, 21 through 12, 21. Jeremiah 33, 25 through 26, 34, 8 through 22. Matthew 15, 12 through 20. Mark 7, 14 through 23. Acts 23, 1 through 11. Hebrews 9, 15 through 22. 10, 28 through 39. Our first read is Exodus 21, 24 through 18. Now these are the rules that you shall set before them. When you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve six years, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he comes in single, he shall go out single. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and his children shall be her masters, and he shall go out alone. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him to Elohim, and he shall bring him to the door <coughs> or the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awe, and he shall be his slave forever. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she shall not go out as the male slaves do. But if she does not please her master who has <coughs> designated her for himself, then he shall let her be redeemed. He shall have no right to sell her to a foreign people, since, she, since he has broken her faith with her. If he designates her for a son, he shall deal with her as with a daughter. If he takes another wife for himself, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, or her marital rights. And if he does not do these things for her, she shall go out for nothing without payment of money. <clears throat> Whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. But if he did not lie in wait for him, but Elohim let him fall into his hands, then I will appoint to you a place to which you may flee. But if a man willfully, like, willfully attacks another man to kill him by cunning, you shall take him from my altar, that he may die. Whoever strikes his father or his mother shall be put to death. Whoever steals a man and sells him, and anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. Whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. When men quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or his fist, and the man does not die but takes to his bed, then the man who rises against and walks outdoors with his staff, he who struck him shall be clear. Only he shall pay for the loss of, the, of his time, and he shall have him thoroughly healed. When a man strikes his slave, male or female, with a rod, and the slave dies under his hand, he shall be avenged. But if the slave survives a day or two, he is not to be avenged, for the slave is his money. When men strive together and hit a pregnant woman so that their children, so that her children come out, but there is no harm, the one who hit her shall surely be fined, as the woman's husband shall impose on him. 
but he shall pay as the judges determine. But if there is harm, then you shall pay life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Then a man strikes the eye of his slave, male or female, and destroys it, he shall let the slave go free because of his eye. If he knocks out a tooth of his slave, male or female, he shall let the slave go free because of his tooth. When an oxen gores a man or woman to death, the ox shall be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall not be liable. But if the oxen has been accustomed to gore in the past, and its owner has been warned, but has not kept it in, and it kills a man or woman, the ox shall be stoned, and its owner shall be put to death. If a ransom is imposed on him, then he shall give for the redemption of his life whatever is imposed on him. If it gores a man's son or daughter, he shall be dealt with according to the same rule. If the ox gores a slave, male or female, the owner shall give their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. When a man opens a pit, or when a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit shall make restitution, he shall give money to its owner, and a dead beast shall be his. When mon one man ox butts another so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and sh share its price, and a dead beast also they shall share. Uh, sorry, my nose is a little stuffy today. Or if it is known that the ox has been accustomed to gore in the past and its owner has not kept it in, he shall repay ox for ox, and a dead beast shall be his. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he shall repay five oxen for the ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall, ne there shall be no blood guilt for him. But if the sun has risen on him, there shall be blood guilt for him. He shall surely pay. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the stolen beast is found alive with his possessions, whether it is an ox or a donkey or a sheep, he shall pay double. If a man causes a field or vineyard to be grazed over, let his beast Or lets his beast loose, and it feeds in another man's field. He shall make restitution for the beast. <clears throat> From the best in his own field, in his own vineyard. If fire breaks out and catches in thorns so that the stacked grain or standing grain or the field is consumed, he who started the fire shall make full restitution. If a man gives to his neighbor money or goods to keep safe, and it is stolen from the man's house, then if the thief is found, he shall pay double. If the thief is not found, the owner of the house shall come near to the Elohim to show whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. For every breach of trust, whether it is for an ox or a donkey or sheep, for a cloak, or for any kind of lost thing of which one says this is it, the case of both parties shall come between before Elohim. The one whom Elohim condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. If a man gives to his neighbor a donkey or an ox or a sheep or any beast to be kept safe and it dies or is injured or is driven away without anyone seeing it, an oath to, by Yahweh shall be between both of them to see whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. The owner shall accept the oath, and he shall not make restitution, but if it is stolen from him, he shall make restitution to its owner. If it is torn by beasts, let him bring it as evidence. He shall not make restitution for what has been torn. If a man borrows anything of his neighbors, and it is injured or dies, the owner not being with it, he shall make full restitution. If the owner was with it, he shall not make restitution. If it was hired, it came for its hiring fee. <coughs> If a man seduces a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall give the bride price for her and make her his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money equal to the bride price for virgins. You shall not permit a sorcerer to a sorceress to live. Whoever lies with an animal shall be put to death. Whoever sacrifices to any god other than Yahweh alone shall be devoted to destruction. 
You shall not know, oops, you shall not wrong a sojourner or oppress him. For you are sojourners in the land of Egypt, and you shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them, and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword. And your wives shall become widows, and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be like a money lender to him, and you shall not exact interest from him. If ever you take your neighbor's cloak and pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering, and it is his cloak for his body. And what else shall he sleep? <coughs> and if he cries to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. You shall not revile Elohim, nor curse a ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer from the fruitless of your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. The firstborn of your son shall give to me. You shall do the same with your oxen and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with its mother, and on the eighth day you shall give it to me. You shall be consecrated to me, therefore you shall not eat any flesh that is torn by beasts in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. <clears throat> you shall not spread a false report, and you shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. You shall not fall in with the many to do evil, nor shall you be a witness in a lawsuit siding with the many as to, prevent, as to pervert justice, nor shall you be partial to a poor man in his lawsuit. <clears throat> if you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying down under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving him with it. You shall rescue it with him. You shall not pervert the justice due to your poor in his lawsuit. Keep far from false charge. And do not kill the innocent and righteous. For I will not acquit the wicked. And you shall not take it. You shall take no bribe. For a bribe binds blinds the clear-sighted and subverts and causes cause of those who are in the right. You shall not oppress a sojourner. You know the heart of a sojourner, for you were <coughs> sojourners in the land of Egypt. For six years you shall sow you shall sow your land and gather in its yield, but the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow. That the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field may eat. And you do likewise with your vineyard and with your olive orchard. Six days you shall do work, but on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may have rest. And the son of your servant woman, and the alien may be refreshed. Pay attention to all that I have said to you, and make no mention of the names of other gods, nor let it be heard on your lips. Three times in a year you shall... Keep a feast to me, you shall keep the festival of unleavened bread, as I commanded you. And you shall eat unleavened bread for seven days at the appointed time in the months, in the month of Abib. For in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty handed, you shall keep the feast of harvest, of the first fruits of your labor. And what you sow in the field, you shall keep the feast of in gathering at the end of the year, when you and your father. <clears throat> oh, when you gather in from the field the fruit of your labor three times in the year, you shall make, and you shall all your males appear before the Lord Elohim. Sorry. <sighs> you shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, or let the fat of my feast remain until morning. The beast of your first fruits. Of your gr ground, you shall bring into the house of Yahweh your Elohim. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the, on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his words. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression, for, for my name is in him. But if you carefully obey his voice, and do all that I say. 
then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary. When my angel goes before you and brings you to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, I, I blot them out. You shall not bow down to their gods nor serve them nor do as they do. But you shall utterly overthrow them and break their pillars in pieces. You shall serve Yahweh your Elohim, and he will bless your bread and your water, and will take sickness away from among you. None shall miscarry or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you, and will throw into confusion all the people against whom you shall come. And I will make all of your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivites, in, in, uh, the Hivites, the Canaanites, the Hittites from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the wild beasts multiply against you. Little by little I will drive them out before you, until you have increased and possessed that land. And I will set your border from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness to the Euphrates. And I'll give the inhabitants of the land into your hands, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make, you shall make no covenant with them and their gods, and they shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. Then he said to Moses, Come up to Yahweh, you and Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to Yahweh, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people of the, all the words of Yahweh and all the rules. And all the people answered him with one voice, All the words that Yahweh has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of Yahweh. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men from the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrifices, sacrifice peace offerings of oxen to Yahweh. <coughs> and Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basins, and half of the blood and threw it against the altar. Then he took the book from the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that Yahweh has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took all the blood and threw it on, on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that Yahweh has made with you, in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up and they saw the Elohim of Israel. There was thunder under his feet, and there were a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They behold Elohim and ate and drank. Yahweh said to Moses, Come up to me up on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of Elohim, and he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you, and behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of Yahweh dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cover, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of Yahweh was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain, in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Two Kings eleven twenty one through twelve twenty one. Jehosh was seven years old when he began to reign. On his seventh year of Jehu, Jehosh began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zabiah of Bersheba. And Jehosh did what was right in the eyes of Yahweh all of his days, because 
Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people continued to sacrifice and make offerings on the high places. Jehoash said to the priest, All the money, the holy things that is brought into the house of Yahweh, the money for which each man has assessed, the money from the assessment of persons, and the money that a man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of Yahweh, let the priest take each from his donor, and let them repair the house when, wherever any needs of repairs is discovered. But by the twenty-third year of King Jehosh, the priest had made no repairs to the house. Therefore King Jehosh summoned <coughs> Jehoiada, the priests and the other priests, and said to them, Why are you not repairing the house? Now therefore take no more money from your donors, but hand it over for the repair of the house. The priests agreed that they should take no more money from the people, and that they should not repair the house. Then Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bore a hole in the lid, and set it beside the altar on the right side, as one entered the house of Yahweh, and the priest who guarded the threshold put it, <coughs> put in it all the money that had been brought into the house of Yahweh. And whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest came up, and they bagged and counted the money that was found in the house of Yahweh. Then they would give the money, <coughs> sorry, that was weighed out into the hands of the workmen who oversighted the house of Yahweh. And they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of Yahweh, and to the masons and the stone cutters, as well as to buy timber and quarried stones for making repairs on the house of Yahweh, or f and for any outlay for the repairs of the house, but there were not made for the house of St Yahweh basins of silver, snuffers, bowls, trumpets, or any vessels of gold or silver from the money that was brought into the house of Yahweh. For that was given to the workmen who were repairing the house of Yahweh with it. And they did not ask for an accounting of the men whose hand they delivered the money to pay out. To the workmen, for they dealt honestly. The money from the guild offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of Yahweh, it belonged to the priest. At that time, Hazael, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath and took it. But when Hazael set his face to go up against Jerusalem, Jehosh, king of Judah, took all the sacred gifts that Jehoshaphat and Jehoram, and Haziah, his fathers, the king of Judah, had dedicated in his own sacred gifts, and all the gold that was found in the treasuries of the house of the Lord, of the king, and of the king's house, and sent these to Hazel, king of Syria. Then Hazel went away from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Josh, and all that he did, are not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah. His servants arose and made a conspiracy and struck down Josh and the house of By Milo on the way that goes down to Silla. It was Josachar, the son of Shemith, and Jehozabad, the son of Shumer, his servant who struck him down so that he died, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And a Messiah whose son reigned in his place. <coughs> Sorry. Thus says Yahweh, if you have not established my covenant with day and night, and the fixed order of heaven and earth, then I will reject the offspring of Jacob and David, my servant, and will not choose one of his offspring to rule over the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will restore their fortunes, and will have no mercy on them. Jeremiah 34, 8 through 22. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh after the king Zedekiah had made a covenant with all his people in, Israel, in Jerusalem to make a proclamation of liberty to them, that everyone should be 
should set free his Hebrew slaves, male and female, so that no one should enslave a Jew, his brother. And they obeyed. All the officials and all the people who had entered the into the covenant that everyone would set free a slave, male or female. So that they would not be enslaved again. They obeyed and set them free. But afterwards they turned around and took back the male and female slaves they had set free and brought them into subjugation as slaves. Oh, subjection. Oops. As slaves. The word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah from Ye Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel made myself... I myself made a covenant with you and your fathers when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, saying at the end of seven years, each of you must set free the fellow's Hebrew who have been sold to you and has served to you six years. You must set him free from your service, but your fathers did not listen to me or decline your ears to me. You recently repented and did what was right in my eyes by proclaiming liberty to each to his neighbor. And you made a covenant before me in the house that is called by my name. But then you turned around and profaned my name when each of you took back his male and female slaves whom you have set free according to their desire. And you brought them back into subjection to be your slaves. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, you have not obeyed me by proclaiming liberty. Everyone to his brother and to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim to you liberty to the sword, to pestilence and the famine, declares Yahweh. I will make you a horror to all the kingdoms of earth. And the men who transgressed my covenant and did not keep the terms of the covenant that they made before me, I will make them ill. Oh, hang on. I will make them like the calf that they cut in two and passed between its parts. The officials of Judah, the officials of Jerusalem, the eunuchs, the priests, and all the people of the land who passed between the parts of the calf, and I will give them into the hand of their enemies, and into the hands of those who seek their lives. Their dead bodies shall be food for the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And Zedekiah, king of Ju Judah, and his officials, I will give into the hands of their enemies, and into the hands of those who seek their lives, into the hands of the army of the king of Babylon, which has withdrawn from you. Behold, I will commit, I will command, declares Yahweh. It will bring them back to the city, and they will fight against it, and take it, and burn it with fire. I will make the city of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. Matthew fifteen twelve through 20 Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offered... When they heard this saying, he answered, Every plant <coughs> that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and is, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defiles a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Mark seven fourteen through 23 and he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then you are also without understanding. Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declares, all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For whom, <coughs> excuse me, 
For from within, out of the heart of a man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, coveting wickedness, deceit, sensua, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All of these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Acts 23, 1-11 Looking intently at the council, Paul said, Brothers, I have lived my life before Elohim and all good conscience up to this day. And I, priest Ananias, came, oh, commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. And Paul said to him, Elohim is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Are you sitting to judge me according to the law, and yet contrary to the law, you ordered me to be struck. Those who stood said, Would you revile Elohim, your high priest? And Paul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was the high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. Now when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other parts Pharisees, he cried out to the council, Brothers, I am Pharisees, a son of the Pharisees. It is with the respect to the hope of the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. And when he had said this, a dissension rose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees says that there was no re resurrection, nor angel, nor spirits, but the Pharisees acknowledged them all. Then a, guard, then a great clamor arose, and some of the scribes of the Pharisees' party stood up and contented sharply. We find nothing wrong in this man. What if a spirit or angel spoke to him? And when the dimension became violent, the, tri the tribune, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him away from among them by f force. And bring him into the barracks. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. Hebrews 9.15-22 Therefore, he is a, medi a mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promise and eternal inheritance. Since a death has occurred, that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant, for where a wall is involved, the death of one who made it must be established. <clears throat> for a will takes effects takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of the calves and goats with water and, sick and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that Elohim commanded you, commanded for you. And in the same way he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, Almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 10, 28-39 Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the son of Elohim, who has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, and has outraged the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. <coughs> but recall the former days when, after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your own property, since you knew that you yourselves had better possessions in an, in an abiding one. Therefore do not throw away your confidences, which has a great reward. 
for you have need of endurance, so that's when you have done the will of Elohim, you may receive what is promised. For yet a little while, and the coming one will come, it will not delay. But my righteous one will, one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohinu, King of the universe, who gave the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohinu, Malach Halom, Ashenatah Lenu Torah, Vaishyeh, Alom Natah Betek, and Yubrukata Adonai Natina Torah.